you, Sam. That assumes that I'm going to remember to put up the program evaluation, and I will try to remember to do that. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have enough time to get through all the materials today. Uh, Sam alluded to the fact that you should have the materials because we're going to be referring to those from time to time. In fact, uh, the screen, the PowerPoint that you see on the screen has placeholders, essentially, and it's got page numbers, and it would behoove you to have the printed materials in front of you. The printed materials have more information than we're going to go over today. It is meant to be a resource that you can go back to, that you can use as you plan, as you think about risk, uh, perhaps as you train some additional people within your institution, that type of thing. That's why there is a lot more information there uh, than we're going to be able to cover today. Essentially, I had several hours worth of, of materials already and then added in the guidance materials. Uh, so we've got some duplicative information as well because what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some uses, some reasons why you're into social media. This is not just about the guidance. It's about uh, getting into social media, some things to think about from a compliance perspective. Are you going to uh, be assisting or are you going to be prohibiting and inhibiting uh, the use of social media? These are some of the things that we want to tackle today, and we're going to hit a lot of this information, then we're going to go into now. We've talked about how you would begin to implement and the risks that you would have to watch out for and the, the uh, risks, the uh, compliance risks, uh, regulatory risks, and so forth. Now let's look at the guidance and see what the guidance says on it that way. You're not looking at the guidance if we spent two hours to talk about the, the six or seven page guidance document that came out, and it was just a proposal. Uh, if we spent all the time on that, then it would leave you with a lack of understanding on a lot of aspects of the social media. Uh, the other thing that you have, and you don't have to have a printout copy of it, uh, but a lot of banks would say, well, we need a social media policy. Uh, is a policy required? No, because there's no real regulation for this. But if you're doing this, your examiners are probably going to expect that you have a policy. Uh, and rather than you starting from ground zero and trying to create one, I thought it would be a good benefit of the program. So you've got a document, and we're going to walk through that real quickly. Uh, we might look at it again towards the end of the program uh, if, if we have time. Uh, but the documents that you have... Uh, it starts out with a social media policy, and I used kind of a heading like I used to use in the bank that talks about the item number, it's compliance policy 100, whatever naming conventions or style your institution uses, you would simply put up there. Uh, but this discusses the purpose of the policy, and it's going to mention uh, the fact that this is social media and it provides examples, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, <coughs> etc., because those are the things that we're going to target. Then it has a statement of policy. It has a thing about appointed users where the bank is going to not just have everybody, but you're going to have a central point of contact. You're going to have to name that contact. Obviously, this is a, a draft sample template that you would customize to your institution. Then we have some definitions so that anybody looking at the policy is going to understand what it is we're trying to talk about. And then there's a section on page three that's a, the employee code of conduct and ethics policy. Well, this could be under this particular social media policy, or it could go under your employee code of uh, ethics. It just depends on where you think this is going to be a best fit. It doesn't have to be a standalone policy. It can certainly be incorporated into other things that you have. When you have a standalone, when your examiners ask about it, then you have this nice one concise document to say, here's what it is. Then it goes through and it discusses the fact that there are confidentiality and copyright issues. Uh, employees have to be sensitive to diversity and discrimination. There are some disclaimers that are in there uh, that are going to be, you know, whenever you do this, you need to indicate, I represent the bank or I don't represent the bank. There are some compliance issues. Then we've got uh, a section that might be a nice fit that would go into uh, your user agreement for your website or a user agreement for your social media page so that the users, the customers who go in there, understand, hey, this is for public use, and I can't go in here and just berate the bank, and I can't use obscene language. They're going to wind up editing that. 
those kinds of issues. Then we've got a short procedures, and again, this would be something that would need some uh, expansion on your part, but it covers the issues uh, that would be the establishment of a social media account. The bank can do this, how the bank sets it up, who's going to be authorized to use it, what kind of posting guidance, because you don't want such informal uh, communication as I have seen on a lot of people's personal sites. Obviously, a personal card that's written uh, from me to you is going to have one level of content and grammar and uh, the way that it's written. Uh, but if I was sending you a professional correspondence, it would be completely different. And that's what we're trying to convey here is the fact that this is professional correspondence. Uh, it may be social media, but that doesn't mean that it uh, is just something between friends and it's, you know, it can be slacking with regards to abbreviations and the wording and such. Uh, and then again, it covers some disclaimers. It's got some controls and audits because you're going to have to have that and some reporting. Uh, and so the controls, the disclaimers, the reporting, some of these are things that the guidance, in fact, calls for. Uh, and because it's a policy, I will assume, and we know what assumptions do, but I'll assume that in most cases uh, your board approves your policies. And as a result of the board approving the policy, we're, again, kind of into the guidance document because it says, hey, your board needs to be involved in this. Uh, your board needs to be involved in the controls. Your board needs to be involved in the uh, formulating of your plan, and they need to review it. Uh, on a regular basis, the board or senior management. So there's a lot of things that go in there. So uh, on slide three, the agenda. We're going to talk about some of the basic types of social networking. We're going to do the math because the first time that I saw these numbers, it kind of uh, really made me say, this is something that deserves uh, some introspection. Uh, and we're going to run through some math numbers so that people have a realistic opinion of how much work am I going to put into this, and is it worth it? And I would come back and say that I'm a proponent of technology, and I think it can be worth it. Um, I think that there are reasons to use social media. There are some reasons that are very good. There are some that are not. But the bank has to recognize this is not a no-cost uh, endeavor. This isn't an issue of, well, the Internet's there, and we're already paying for access. Uh, we can get on Facebook for free. It's not a big deal. It's a no-cost deal. Just do it. It's not a no-cost deal. You just looked at a little bit of a policy and procedures. We're talking about training. We're talking about a lot of, of controls and issues and auditing and guidance. There's a lot of things that are going to tie into it. It's not a no-cost issue. So banks need to, to look at the math and go into it with their eyes wide open. Uh, advertising and retention rules big part of this because why are, are you going to be on social media in the first place? Generally, it's going to be advertising. When we talk about advertising, generally retention goes hand in hand. Bankers often don't even think about the retention. Well, hey, how am I going to be able to do this? What, what avenues are available to me? Do I have to print out all these screens? Do I have to do screen captures? Is there a way to go into the social media and, and actually capture uh, some of these things that have us mentioned or or are our pages. Those are some of the things we're going to discuss, but in light, um, in a light mode, because there are various kinds of social media, and I can't cover them all, and don't know all of the rules on the retention. But if you get into a phase of social media, you have to know what those uh, objectives and what those capabilities are going to be. Complaints and security are going to be a big issue. Then we're going to talk about the proposed guidance. Now we've gone through the basics. We've talked about a lot of these things in the proposed guidance. There's some things that are that are in that guidance that are new compared to what we will have discussed, and there's a lot of things that are redundant. So uh, we do, again, have some duplication, but I think that's fine because we want to be able to look and see what is in the guidance uh, spe specifically. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the duplicative issues, but we will talk about them. Then we'll talk about crafting a policy because uh, you free to use the template uh, and to customize it. It needs to be customized. At the same time, uh, what needs to go into your policy? Then we're going to talk about some legal cases. Why? Because those legal cases, in many instances, are 
Uh, why are we going to do what we're going to do? Well, there is a case.